This is News 8 from Wood TV. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. We have a special treat for you as we go back on the Michigan Road with Dick Evans. Thank you for joining us. I'm Susan Shaw. And I'm Brian Sterling. For decades, Dick Evans crisscrossed our state, traveling 500,000 miles to take viewers on unique trips to places that they might never ever go. In 1990, we aired a special broadcast, The Best of the Michigan Road. Right now, we want to bring you a special encore presentation. Here's Dick Evans back on the Michigan Road. You know, one of the really fun things about doing these stories are the people that you run into. So many unusual people, people that stand out in your memory. We picked a few of them, not all of them, of course, and we'd like you to see those. It seems strange to find deep in the mountain area of south central Yugoslavia, a city so completely different as the city of Mostar. That was a trip we made even before our series started, and that one took a month. Still, it was instrumental in getting the ball rolling. I singled out a few of the people who bring back memories since then, like Elmer Pavlis, the man near Buckley with several barns filled with lore from the logging era. We spent two days with him, admired this forerunner of today's vacuum sweeper. But it has two connections. It has one here and one on the bottom. And when you put it on one, then it sucks up the dirt in it. And when you put it on the other, then it blows it under the rug. At Berrien Center, John Penrod has a postcard center. He's one of the state's premier photographers. And his pictures are found in and of virtually every Michigan city. Our cameras did some picture taking at Lillian Donaldson's beautiful backyard in Lansing. And then it was time to talk. <laughs> and as Lillian exclaimed that she didn't know that chair did that, this very proper English lady muscled that chair back into almost like new condition. I had a quick reflection of another minor collision with the Earth. That sign still haunts me. Luckily, there were no nose dives when Steve Glottfelty of Marshall's scaled the silo that he iced down with a garden hose for lack of a mountain to climb. Taking a 357 Magnum revolver and putting it to his chest, Richard Davis proved his worthiness of the bulletproof vest. Hey, I'm sure glad he didn't fake falling over afterwards. Ray Watkin of Perry caught our admiration for being the ultimate civic-minded citizen. In addition to writing, reporting, and publishing his local paper, he also served as the clerk, mayor, and city manager. Driving an oversized van, Dave Hacker of the Detroit Free Press has a job I can identify with. He heads to the state's farthest corners, usually the UP, whenever he hears of a breaking story. Dick Holmberg fought the system for 25 years. The Corps of Engineers, the various counties and township know-it-alls who kept saying, his erosion of shoreline sands prevention measures wouldn't work. Well, he finally proved at his own expense they would. And now they have hired him to work up and down the beaches to restore them. Summer and winter, Don Perry of Higgins Lake dresses just like that while carving alabaster. It's a kind of rock. He may fashion a vase so thin you can see light through it or incredibly tiny items like a cocktail glass with a cherry in it. On the other side of the state, Chuck Schmidt of Whitehall also thinks in miniature. All that effort to dignify a tiny dollhouse. Jenison's Hendrick Klein will spend days customizing your trusty trophy. Even Billy the Kid wouldn't draw on this. Using a blowtorch, 
Artist Bill Allen works in the hills near Maple City making dangerous reptiles like this iguana. The hairy baboon with its baby is also of metal. Each hair is nothing more than wire. I had my moment of glory, briefly, when we first visited Frank and Moose's famous Bonners. There they had the perfect Santa outfit. For a moment, I was the man on the Michigan road. On to the animal world and things unusual. Whoa, 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 whoa. A simple game of pool, I break. And then challenger Pauline Polinski of Battle Creek introduced Buffy as her partner. They may be man's best friend, but this I nominate as the ugliest. It's Carol Carpenter's Pride Sharpe at Plainwell. And the dog with the ugliest voice? I had been told about this dog. It's a boxer, nine years old, the run of the litter, which didn't at all keep him from growing. He threw his head back. Now I know how music critics feel. There's no hiding it. Every time Joe Lacey of Battle Creek waxes musically, Chester chimes in, and boy, what a voice. You like noise? Have I got noise for you? Hey, let me scratch you. <laughs> hey, come here. come here. The tail wags the sign of friendship. But one look at cameraman Dan Salas, no way. How about a little belly rubbing? Hey. <laughs> the pig seemed trusting enough, as long as I had food in hand, but will that tail wear out after a while? I take it this is Daddy's little boy? Well, actually, it's my wife's pig. I bought it for her for our anniversary. <laughs> we nearly bought a llama. Well, it's a Vietnamese pot-bellied pig. As uh, you can see, he has a real straight tail, a sway back, and a pot belly about this time we took a quick break yes and he's very well potty trained uh, he hasn't did a thing in the house since we brought him home ham after all there's one inside you could use twice a week we grease him down with some uh, skin so soft okay prepare yourself for this <laughs> Come on, Ham. Mike said you like this. Oh, you have the coldest hands. Yeah, Kitty, that's enough noise to raise the dead. Not all pigs make so much noise. <laughs> all over the pigs get their reward keeping them in rewards is costly I have to go into this grocery store to buy the oreo cookies because that's what the pigs run for everybody looks at you real funny especially when you go up the checkout stand carrying six or eight packages of oreos and i tell them well it's for my pigs and they say yeah well, you know <laughs> we have some of those at home too and i said no i have racing pigs and this is what they run for i have to buy oreo cookies the cheerleaders are shanghaied from the audience <laughs> Second group, we've got Hammy Fay Bacon, Carrie Grunt, uh, My Hammy Vice, and Moham Hawk Ali. <laughs> Al approached the Oreo company about sponsoring he and the pigs. They weren't even nice to him in answer, explaining they wanted no connection to pig food. Anyway, the pigs don't split them apart and lick the frosting like humans, they gulp them down. When somebody asks you what you do, what kind of response do you, uh, you get? Oh, you I get some them? weird looks. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> this is Buffy, and Tony Barrett of Lansing assured me it sipped Coke through a straw. We watched nothing. We waited and waited, and finally her genius-type son returned from next door with a special straw, and it had catnip in it. Buffy chewed, but just wasn't thirsty. And finally, Donna Hoxie at Cedar Springs has just the answer to the high taxes they're putting on gasoline anymore. Her teeny little donkeys get her about in a style fit for the Queen of Sheba. I'm afraid I'll drop her too. No, you won't. I've been called a j before. It's the first time I ever held one. We decided I'd be best off in a sulky. No, trotter here, just an easy pace down the old farm lane. Tumbling along with the tumbling tumble song. <laughs> If it goes toot toot and clang clang, you can bet it's a train. Well, usually anyway. And we've seen a bunch of them. That's coming up. On the road again. Going places that I've never been. Seeing things that I may never see again. I can't wait to get on the road again. Trains come in all sorts and sizes. The big ones you know about. I've seen a number of them that even give kids like me a chance to ride on them. And there have been the little ones that the hobbyists have. A look at some of the best. Now there is one contented kid. That was me at the engineer's throttle of Dale and Tom Briggs' model engine. Just one of several that they have put together. In fact, by now, they've probably completed work on this Baldwin steam engine. And over in Battle Creek, Bruce Phillips' backyard has an elaborate outdoor train layout. With the clickety-clack of the real thing, these twin engines are pulling about 30 pounds. Uh, that's a that's a actual copy of a Swiss train that runs over in Switzerland. Uh, the dining room car, or the dining car lights on the table light up. Uh, that car probably there's maybe seven in the United States right now. It's a big setup. Bruce has added lots of realistic buildings including this onion dome church. What the tracks really needed was a sandblaster to clear away ice. Bruce added another larger engine to his LGB, complete with automatic whistles. Two men, a boy, and their toy. Or would you say three boys? On a smaller scale, just south of Kalamazoo, a hobby shop called The Train Barn has a mammoth layout of 2,000 feet of track. That 20-car train will take about 10 minutes to make a complete circle through tunnels and gorges, finally crossing the Royal George Suspension Bridge. All the handiwork of Seth Gein. There were other kinds of engines. This is Doug Sanka Marshall at the wheel of his restored 1918 La France fire engine. It was the first gasoline powered fire truck in the area. The Gilmore Car Museum near Hickory Corners was a genuine joy to cover as a newsman. Everywhere you looked, there was an age-old car worth talking about. But my real thrill was when they let me drive this super roadster, a Duesenberg. When I was a kid, 
All the movie stars owned one. Mighty trusting people around here. Potter of Hastings has a neat little car, too. He made his of wood. Imagine the attention it gets when parked at the curb. Oh, my goodness, look what they're rolling out just for me. <laughs> a replica of an old steam engine, the kind that helped settle the West. The ride was fun. that get by very well with their feet. They're called the not quite over the hill gang. I was forced into this, and you can tell it. So it's not aerobics. It's still fun to kick up your heels. Step behind, step behind, then turn, turn. The considerably more strenuous routine was put on for us by the Encore Dance Group from a wide area near Lawton and Decatur. They performed overseas, Chicago, many competitions. It's the second week of deer camp. I got a swollen head. I'm lying with the, the Youpers. Jim DeCare and Joe Patilla, two of the famous band members, were in their recording studio. Yes, they have their own and are more popular now than ever. And look what they did to my song, Mom. Where's the road to go in? I just can't seem to find a road to go in. Get those what they call accidentals. To me, I always thought they were bad notes. We just can't seem to find a road to go in. Dick Evans didn't care for heights, but despite that, in 1976, he went to the top of the Mackinac Bridge. Here is a look back at his terrifying trip. This has got to be the top of the world. I know there are taller places, but do you realize we're 552 feet up in the air, the top of the Mackinac Bridge. The Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. is 555 feet. And I'd just as soon stay a few feet underneath that. From here, you can just see forever. An elevator takes you most of the way to the top. Then you crawl through porthole-sized holes in the steel girders, about a half dozen in all, to get to the middle. But there's also a hole in the I-beam you're crawling on. All of which brings back memories of the years before 1957 when this bit br I'm scared to death. <laughs> I can only imagine. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, who can blame him? I, no. you know, that was one of many memories that he was able to log on the Michigan Road. That's right. Well, our look back at the best of On the Michigan Road with Dick Evans continues tomorrow night at 7 o'clock right here on Wood TV 8. We will look at some of the food that Dick enjoyed and ate on the road and go to some of his favorite color tours in the UP. Until then, thanks for joining us.